Hello team, welcome to another ATP Geopolitics video with myself, Jonathan M.S. Pierce. This is Ukraine War frontline update for the 18th of April 2024. Let's get to the map. Uh, thank you to JR who's done the mapping. If you don't know what the lines mean, please check out the key on the screen at the moment. Pause the video. Uh, so we have some changes to the northern border. I guess finally, it's been a long time since the Free Russia Legion, Russia um, Volunteer Corps and others were attacking across the northern border. Deep state maps have changed, uh, rejigged their map to reflect that there there is no grey zone or no controlled territory north of the border. I have a feeling Andrew Perpetua still has grey zones there, not reflected in the defensive line. So, uh, so we're, we're going to come to the northeastern uh, axis and for the first time in maybe three weeks there are some gains some very small gains here uh, just between Tabaivka that salient there and uh, Ivaniska up here uh, Orlianska Ivanivka sorry not Ivaniska that's down near Chazivya Ivanivka so the Russians have made some minor gains in that direction maybe a possible rejig in favor of the Ukrainians just a little bit south of there, but I, I think that's not uh, a push. I, I don't know. That's some deep state map not reflecting any of the other mappers. Don't really know anything about that. So maybe something to keep an eye on there, especially since we haven't seen anything uh, moving in this region for three weeks. So, yeah, uh, that there is that. Then we come down to, well, no changes to the mapping, but there are reports of a repelled Russian attack, a mechanized assault in the Terni area. Uh, the Ukrainians are, I think, still desperately short of ammunition. They are apparently choosing their targets wisely with regard to things like HIMARS, but also with artillery, only shooting at what they have to. And this is a real challenge for the Ukrainians, although they have they have been firing more artillery recently, so they've found some maybe using up stockpiles, like I've said previously, uh, for the last couple of weeks. It is difficult for them. They definitely do need uh, artillery ammunition. Someone was saying uh, this morning in the thread to uh, my first video, I think, that, and it was a copy and paste from uh, another video, but it, but th they were saying that, look, can't speak to the provenance of this comment, but someone was saying they were from a military background. They are involved in logistics of, of ammunition in the US. And it's, it said something to do, I'll, I'll dig it out and read it to you properly tomorrow. But the gist of it was that they are sitting on loads of ammunition that if it's not going to get used, will end up having to get destroyed. And uh, it's really frustrating for these people working in the armed forces, in logistics and whatnot, that, that that is just ready to go to uh, to Ukraine to help and would help for months and months and months. And it's just stuck there because there's been no change in uh, the bill in Congress for what well, has been no aid packages for seven months, really significant ones of that kind of required size. So, yeah, frustrating, really deeply frustrating because these guys are feeling it on the front line every single day right some gains for the russians just north of the chalk area where they had attacked just here uh over now this is interesting because andrew perpetua in his live stream was saying that this is a hill as far as i can understand as far as i remember so it's 130 going down to 120 and uh, 86 yeah so this this is definitely a, a high area there let's have a look at it on the 3d yep you can see that hill there and i think that's been hit by russian shelling which very clearly suggests that the ukrainians are actually in control of that area uh so andrew perpetua saying even though it's in his gray zone at the moment he's he's thinking about moving that to being ukrainian controlled well syria maps has that very much under russian control and then has gains just to the south of there uh so i there's obviously some disagreement between the mappers here um, I would be somewhat dubious about perhaps the Surat map claims. Indeed, Andrew Perpetua is saying that the Russians don't seem to be here at all either. Well, they did attack up that um, chalk. Uh, there you go. That that chalk, I, I don't know if you can call it a mountain or a hill or just a large embankment. It's more like a, a tailings, a chalk tailings. Uh, it, 
uh, yeah, ridge, really, I guess is probably probably the word. So the Russians are still in control of that, according to Surat maps, but none of the other mappers agree with that at all. So I doubt the Russians are there. In fact, I yeah, this whole area seems to be somewhat um, up for grabs in terms of what Surat maps are saying. Although the claim here is that over the last eight days, so it's not something that's just happened and it's... Uh, it could have changed since since the, then. Um, Russian armies made small advances northeast of the Belharevka chalk quarry. Uh, take that with a pinch of salt or a dab of chalk, if you like. Right, uh, coming further on down past the Seversk front line, we get to Chaziv Yar and no changes to the mapping there. Uh, that's really good news from, um, from all the mapping sources. Uh, actually, no reports has something about Belarivka. New geolocated footage shows Russian advances east of Belarivka near the industrial sector. Uh, while this area has changed hands quite a few times, it seems Russians have established themselves there now. Fighting in the area continues. So actually, that could support... I might have to pop back up there now. Now I've just uh, remembered that I had that source. So you've got these kind of patches there. I think that refers to these. So I think that is where Surat Maps is claiming, yeah. So, Bilarif, um, uh, Surat, ah, start again. No reports might actually confirm what Surat Maps is saying there. So maybe Andrew Perpetua will catch up there, catch up with Surat Maps upon reviewing new uh, data. Right, coming on to Chaziv Yar, as I was saying, no change there. Uh, there is, is this, yeah, I found this interesting because... If you remember where Solidar is, so we have Bakhmut. Uh, I'm going to remind you because, you know, you might not look at the maps as often as I do every day. Uh, you've got Bakhmut here. You've got Chesiv Yard to the west. You've got Opitny to the south, going on to Klyshchivka. And if you remember to the north, you've got um, uh, Yehidne, Krasnohora, uh, Bladdatne, and then Solidar. And when Bakhmut kind of fell. It was the taking of Solidar first and then coming from the north and then coming all down here. It seems like such a long time ago. Well, Solidar, interestingly, is under quite a lot of attention from the Ukrainian aviation. Now, l last data we had was Ukrainian a aviation is only working at a ratio of 1 to 30. Ukrainian to Russian aviation. So Russians do this an awful lot more. But these are uh, the hammer... Um, precision guided glide bombs that the Ukrainians are using in uh, provided by the French in this particular case used in Solidar. Uh, so there must be, considering you know the fighting is taking place a long way from there, that must be trying to take out staging posts or depots, important command and control structures, who knows. But certainly the Ukrainians are targeting uh, Solidar with their guided glide bombs. But no change to the Chaziv Yar, which is Really good news for the Ukrainians, but yeah, as as often with these places, it's like, yeah, okay, oh, it's stabilised, and then next day, you know, huge amounts of changes or whatever it is. So um, hopefully, hopefully there will be no more changes there, but uh, the Russians are definitely pushing on quite a lot in the Chaziv Yar area. Right, then we come to Novokonyove, north of the Avdivka uh, salient, where the Russians have been pushing uh, north into the settlement or to the to to the side of the settlement i presume that's still novel uh, no um novokalnyove uh, here not some different settlement it's just an interestingly shaped one and then up towards keramik well the russians are um making some serious advances there as according to both deep, deep state map and surat map so both of those mappers have the Russians gaining possibly a large attack taking place there today. And then the other side of Novokonyove moving up the railway line towards Ocheretnye. So that is, um, again, a challenge for the Ukrainians. Uh, they are being pushed back quite a bit there. Um, I don't know if... Well, Surat Maps here says, the situation north of Avdivka, while the fighting in the... In, in the first streets of Ocheretny is taking place. So that's over here. Uh, the Russian army continues to take up positions full of trenches north of the railway. The capture of the heights, so that's there, capture the heights around Novokonyove will facilitate the seizure of the locality, which has already taken place from the southern, south, uh, 
eastern axis. So let's have a look at the topography around here, see if there's anything uh, to note of uh, any kind of hills or high ground. So the claim there was that the Russians took control of the high ground around Novel Konyovy. I'm not sure that's definitely the case. It kind of dips a little bit here, a little bit of a high ground coming up here perhaps. Um, but it's kind of on the same level as as these fields before it dips back down. Let's go and look at the height um, by looking at the bottom right hand corner of the map. So remember just down here we have the height of the terrain. It's about 191 going down, 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 down. Uh, so I suppose you could say 190 up here. But it's 194, so it's, it's it's on the same level as here, just as like we looked at just then. Uh, but they are on that high ground alongside here, so uh, I guess that's um, that will be somewhat advantageous for them if they can keep moving along the high ground, and then the settlement is below it, both to the east over here, uh, the northwest, and then to the west over here. So, yeah, the Russians seem to be gaining some momentum in that particular area. No change to the Tonyenka area or along the Derna River, which I find good news for the Ukrainians because they were making some fairly substantial gains in the Tonyenka area or west of Tonyenka on the way to Umanska. But uh, yeah, no news of any movement there today. And in fact, no movement for the rest of the front line. So again, you say that's the, well, that is good news for the Ukrainians. Like I said to you over the last week, I think the Russians are struggling in terms of um, equipment and personnel, but I think the Ukrainians really are on their knees as well. So it is it is touch and go in a number of these areas. And if the Russians can make a breakthrough, there are these claims, there have been these claims in some of the mainstream media outlets that you know the Russians could could achieve a breakthrough, but I don't know that they've got the equipment and the and the troops to really affect a proper breakthrough. I do wonder how many troops they've had sort of training, what they've got behind um, back in Russia and deep into, say, Luhansk, how many troops they've got getting ready for a, a, a next offensive. I mean, if they do have one plan for the summertime, I think it's, it's more unlikely that they'll have mechanised equipment to throw uh, at those any kind of coming offensive it's more unlikely that they they'd have that than they'd have troops so you might i just don't know how many troops they have uh, back behind they are consistently um mobilizing and conscripting and doing all that they normally do uh, to the tune of supposedly 30,000 a month um they might be slowly building up forces to be able to push in a few months or not or they are being attrited at the rate that they are they are recruiting in which case um you know any future um delusion any any future intentions of taking huge amounts of territory are delusions grandier possibly uh bad news today that it appears it's been released today and i think it could be as a result of uh, the jankoy airfield getting hit and losing all sorts of uh, expensive S-400 and radar equipment, particularly in that area of the airfield. Possibly only one airframe lost, as I said this morning, but we don't know. Um, and then, lo and behold, today, the Russians bring out some footage of Dnipro being hit at airfield there. Now, I know that Dnipro has been hit over the last few days, but it gets hit all the time. Uh, but nonetheless, uh, possibly this airfield there getting an, uh, a hammering and the Russian, the Ukrainians potentially losing a number of MiG-29s. One of them has been um, unmoved since 2022, but another one definitely seems to have been damaged, another one destroyed. And uh, that's not good news that, that they are able, the Russians are able to hit Ukrainian um, aviation as it's parked up you know, without long enough for the Ukrainians to scramble their planes. The, 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 the you know, the uh, warnings did, obviously didn't come in. And yeah, that's, that's, that's bad news. I always am amazed that they're still operating from airfields so close 
to the front line. This is what I thought when we saw Mikel Aif get hit uh, some months back and have uh, Ukrainian planes hit there. And I just think, wow, that really is close to the front line. Um, but of course, you need the closer you are to the front line, the more efficient you can efficiently you can operate your airframe. So yeah, you move further further back, and you're expending a lot of fuel, a lot of time, and not getting enough you know activity in the skies to release your weaponry and do what you need to do. So yeah, it is a, there is a trade off there, but nonetheless, it, bad news with regard to Ukrainian airframes being struck. Don't know if it's happened in the last one or two days or whether they have been keeping. So sometimes the Russians seem to keep their footage and release it at to, to try and um, manipulate the narrative so that, oh, the Ukrainians have done something, or we've done something as well, um, and they just keep it, keep it in store for that. So who knows? But it doesn't really matter whether they've kept it in store or it happened yesterday. It still happened, and that is that they are still... You know, big losses for the Ukrainians. Anyway, I'll talk about that tomorrow morning. In the meantime, thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and share. Uh, take care of yourselves and I'll speak to you soon.